everyone welcome back to this nice and sunny day it's Friday I've got a day off from work and the last two days I took note <laughs> took note of something very interesting at this day it has taken 9.2 kilowatt hours to recharge from 30% to 100 and the next day from 30.5 percent it has only taken 8.36 kilowatt hours that is very interesting because the state of charge when we started charging was the same but the kilowatt hours taken are completely different so does this mean it hasn't charged the car to 100 percent i'm going for a short drive to the next town to the post office to um, pick up a parcel yeah that's the disadvantage when you live a little bit in the countryside you have to drive a lot of kilometers just to pick up a parcel it's not just around the corner see that was when we left the car yesterday last night at 30.5 start live data I'm also interested in the voltage Okay, so it has recharged to 98.3%. The charging has stopped, say, six and a half hours, four. So the charge has stopped four hours ago um, at this stage. So the minimum voltage um, 4093, 4096, everything is well balanced. We've got 29, 31 degrees, 27 outside. So the temperature is still a bit higher because of the um, charging and heat loss. Okay, let's go for a drive. I'll um, put you back in the... Um... All right. Go away, dog. Oh, shut up. I tell you what, with this beeping stuff, beeping shit in the car, we've got an LG washing machine, apparently made in Japan as well. It does a similar thing. It beeps and plays music and all this stuff and shit. It, what the heck? And actually, I, I didn't want to talk about the um, battery charging capacity stuff. Um, this video today is about something different. It's about the um, battery though. I, I will have the climate control on. On here. Can't see the light yes it is turned. So air condition is on. We've got 29 degrees already, so there was two minutes just driving out of the carport. Okay, so the concern of this video is about the battery again the battery is and i can't get my head around what is going on i can't find a thread to follow it's just all these numbers and figures are all over the place i can't see a pattern or a constant or something you know where you can we can follow and see oh yeah that's where it goes to that's why it is this way i just can't seem to find anything okay you know the the PHEV's battery has 12 kilowatt hours of theoretical capacity. You can only use this capacity partly, as we all know. When your battery gauge in the dashboard shows empty or has one blue bar left, you are at about 30% state of charge of the battery. So the last 30% of the battery you can't really use. The only time you can use them is you are towing a trailer or if you're going uphill if you use a lot of power it depletes the battery a little bit further and that's what this reserve is for as well as protecting the battery of course yeah you don't want to discharge the battery too far because this is just not good is this 
camera holder very bouncy here or so? Or is it just me who is not looking straight? So we've got this 30% at the bottom. And I reckon when you fully charge the car to 100%, it does not really charge the battery to 100% accordingly to the voltage um, which is shown after a recharge. Because the voltage is only 4.1 volts when the battery turns or when, when the charge turns off, which is not a 100% state of charge of a lithium ion cell. Yeah, this is more like 4.2 volts. So there is apparently a little gap at the top as well of possibly, I would say, more 5%. Yeah. So to sum this up, of the 100% of the 12 kilowatt hours, which is the 100%, you can only use 65%. Yeah, 30% bottom, 5% at the top which you can't access usually. So now, in back in October, back last year when I did the um, cell smoothing procedure and they recalibrated the ECU to match the actual capacity of the battery, some people have, what? Some people have stated it might be they have widened this area, the 65%, and using a little bit more of the lower 30% of the battery capacity. So that means they have expanded the actual usable area to get me back or to, to give me my capacity back of the battery. And I always thought, nah, that's not that's not right. It doesn't doesn't look like and I, I don't think it is like this and I still do don't get me wrong I still do I have, have monitored of course <laughs> I have monitored and measured and put all the figures and numbers what I've observed onto my little whiteboard there oh, there's an Outlander oh, it's not a PHV forget about it <clears throat> so I've put a heaps of numbers and figures on my whiteboard over there whenever I've got information I thought they are um, useful for that and it doesn't look like they have they have widened up this area this usable area for the battery when when we reach the 30% state of charge at the bottom of of the battery's capacity so before the ice kicks in we still have 3.75 3.8 sometimes 3.7 volts and this is not the or this this voltage is not less than we had before the procedure I checked some recordings before they did the procedure with a dog and could see similar voltages for the battery so it doesn't it doesn't look like we are having it doesn't look like they have just reprogrammed the ECU and told it to use more of the bottom reserve. Which, which would be an easy explanation of what they have done. But from, from, the, from the voltage perspective, it doesn't look like they have actually done it. So we still are not 100% sure what the procedure included. And as you have seen just this morning, the battery cells, they look very balanced to me. So there's only a few millivolt different between the weakest and the strongest out of 80, uh, 80 cells, basically, yeah? What is this? Oh, this is a corn harvester. Wow. So what I will do, I will collect more information about the state of charge and the voltage at this state of charge. and. and of course, I did a lot of googling and research about battery voltages and state of charge. You can you can find heaps and heaps of pages with information of it. And the overall contents, and also it, it doesn't make a big sense for Mitsubishi to do that because this would harm the battery even further. 
the degradation would go even further because you are going into the deeper discharging area which is not healthy for the battery I mean the 30% is very very safe you still got I mean if it's under 20 I would say you are getting into an area where it's not really safe anymore maybe 15 and lower would be unsafe but 30 is very very conservative yeah so you have a lot of, of room to play with and that's what I said before if you're towing a trailer going uphill and you need a lot of, of power additionally to the ice engine um, it can deliver this from this reserve without harming the battery so from this perspective it it doesn't make too much sense for Mitsubishi to do this I mean on the other hand the whole Mitsubishi thing doesn't make sense anyway so yeah and and from what I read on on these websites before you measure the voltage of a battery you should give it a rest for at least four hours to um, allow the chemicals inside the battery to settle down and to establish the normal um, structure again so it doesn't make sense to stop the car and immediately measure the voltage because when you take the load away the voltage will climb up slowly and you have to wait at least four hours before you make the uh, measurement for the to determine the nominal voltage of a cell I, I didn't know this either that's that's new I mean four hours is a lot of time for a battery to rest yeah and also if I park the car for four hours you know what happens I lose two and a half percent of capacity just for something I don't know I have to talk, need to talk about my theory about this as well um, but not now that's what I did last night with the first measurement and that's what I did this morning so the the charging stopped at about four o'clock and we left at quarter past eight so four hours time and then we measured the voltage um, you need to keep this in mind so when you when you turn off your car and measure the voltage that's not the nominal voltage that's just the turn off voltage when you take the load away guys this is all very very complicated what are, what are people doing without this app and I think that's why people are getting confused when the car loses capacity and loses range and they don't know what's going on and think oh this is just the degradation of the battery which which happens here yeah, the, the car is three or four years old and the battery has degraded and just can't can't make it anymore guys stay with me I'll find out if this is true or not I'll measure the heck out of this car and see what's going on so over the next couple of days I will do measurements with an empty battery or a different state of charge in between and a full battery so all kind of state of charges and measure the um, voltage after the settle after the rest hours the rest time is it called officially it's the rest the battery rest time is it called so we have to make sure the car rests for four hours before I measure and you always should measure at an open circuit so there should be no load on the cell at all which is that is totally impossible with the PHEV because to measure it I have to turn it on yeah at least to have I put it in ready mode which is going on here which already consumes a little bit of power for the electronic and the car itself so I need to make sure to turn off the climate control before I leave the car so it doesn't turn on when I um, start the car after four hours so that'll be interesting okay I'll um, just go around the corner okay so we've driven 14 14 kilometers to pick up a parcel and see we are down to 77 percent and the voltage is almost 4 volts and you can see it will climb because I'm not moving the car anymore the air condition is still turned on but you will see the voltage is going up See the air climbs one millivolt only, but it already starts to climb. And this is exactly there another millivolt. I'm gonna turn off the climate control. You will find 
see they are climbs even more because I turn off the load okay um, I'll, I'll be back in um, five minutes maybe six okay so this was the voltage when we left the car and now I just do a resume it doesn't matter because it should be over four volts now uh, maybe not ah, it's close to four volts now the when when you when you park the car that the voltage goes up again not important the important stuff is have they widened up the area to turn and climb control have they widened up the area of use usability of usable so the actual question is have they moved the battery the usable area of the battery into the lower area which is no which is usually not available to give me my battery capacity back what do you think what have they done what is the cell smoothing procedure what does it include i'll keep monitoring the voltages over the next couple of days and put this all together i, f I feel like a little bit like ben from tesla nomics he's putting all these numbers and figures together from his tesla as well and present them he's a data analyst and I need to consider if I have to buy another whiteboard for the carport too. <laughs> I just want to keep this one short. <laughs> I know. I know. You put your comments below, please. Tell me what you think. What have they done to the battery when they have done the battery cell smoothing procedure? Have they just reprogrammed the ECU? Let me, let me know below what you think about all this stuff. To summarize, I don't think they have moved the actual area or widened it up because the, the dog still shows the same, yeah? It kicks, the ice kicks in at 30%. The voltage does not seem to have moved from before the procedure. So all these numbers and figures, they're all the same as before. So it doesn't look like to me it is just a widen of this area of this usable area of the battery but look I'm not an expert I'm just a driver but I'm I'm a very technical person I'm really interesting to see what's going on inside the car and and try to understand how the car works and how this software works I mean the algorithm of this software alone is just mind-blowing Mitsubishi what are you thinking please if you know there's a problem and you you surely know there's a problem with the ECU software bring out some updates even for the older cars it can't be that hard to change some parameters and make the software better you've got all the data now watch my other videos you've got everything there short video leave your comments below what you think and I'll talk to you in the next video this is Andy from Unplugged TV sunny Australia signing off stay tuned